This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello. Well, the whole world's gone crazy. They're using Barry Manilow as a weapon now. <laughs> I heard that the protesters responded with Twisted Sister. Rock and roll! But that is unconfirmed. I'll look into it. Leave it with me. Some uh, texts and emails and such from last night when it appeared that um, the entire show had been taken over by two topics, teeth and eggs. We were only accepting calls about teeth and eggs last night, or so it seems. Declan emails, I once had a goose in cork. Really? <laughs> How is it for you? He says, they lay maybe two to three eggs a week. They're huge and so delicious. Mmm, mmm, <laughs> he says. Jane says, regarding tooth pain, I was getting exactly the same thing with tooth pain and then I started using toothpaste for sensitive teeth. Unbelievable it worked, says Jane. What, like it says on the packet? Paul texts, the average sun reader... Well, this is um, Jacob Smug. You, you, you know uh, Smug, don't you? You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Uh, yeah, he wrote this um, risible letter to readers of the sun full of uh, five-syllable words urging them to tell him what to do in his new job. I'll tell him what to do. <laughs> He's the, uh, the the minister for sighing. <sighs> anyway, Paul says the average sun reader understood unfettered because, uh, you know, uh, Smug was going on about how now we are uh, out from under the evil auspices of the European socialist superstate. No! Now we are unfettered as a nation. <laughs> to go forth and trade less than we used to and import hormonal beef and all that other stuff we don't want to eat. Unfettered, he said. That's what we are, unfettered. The chains are off. And Paul says the average sun reader understood unfettered as a Greek salad without cheese. I'll bet they didn't. Rich tweeted, uh, we received a letter from my three children's dentist last month, which stated that they were going to get rid of all their NHS patients. Really? What, like terminated? Affirmative. Seems a bit strong, doesn't it? Just take them off your list. You don't have to get rid of them. But if that is the new directive from the NHS, it's a way to keep the, uh, the waiting list down. <laughs> Kevin Brisbane says uh, I pay for private health in Australia and I'm quite happy with it knee replacement wait one week yeah well if you paid for private health in this country you'd wait one week for a knee replacement if you uh, want to wait uh, for a knee replacement on the NHS then uh, by the time they get around to you uh, you'll be freshly dead I would expect either dead or cured one of the two I mean it comes to something doesn't it because the, the very same people, this applies to dentists as well, the very same people that say, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to NH NHS. Oh, no, God, the waiting list is totally chock-a-block. The very same people, they're not different people, they're not different doctors or dentists, they're the same ones that will say, oh, private patient? Oh, absolutely. How does this afternoon suit you? They're the same people. How come they have an open book? If you've got money, honey... <laughs> But you can't get seen if you ain't, if you're relying on a, a system that you've paid for already. People think because it's free at the point of use that it's free. And this is part of the problem with the NHS. I'm certain of it. It's because the NHS treats you as an irritation, not a customer. If you've got money, you just watch the difference in attitude to your doctor or dentist. They've got all the time in the world for you if you've got money. If you ain't got money and you're one of those awful NHS people that are clogging up their waiting room ugh, with their awful shoes and their bad breath, Disgusting. then um, <laughs> they, ain't got no, uh, they ain't got no appointments. Not now, not ever, never. But you've paid for it already. That's the annoying thing. Just because you don't pay for it at the point of use doesn't mean to say you haven't paid for it. If you pay taxes, you've paid for it. <laughs> I think that's part, of the, that's, that's part of the problem with the NHS. You don't pay at the point. You just pay all, all the way along your life. Kevin um, uh, Brisbane 
I just read that. Ian emails, I'm on a five-year waiting list to have a broken wisdom tooth out, as it's got to be taken out by a surgeon at the hospital. Five years. <gasps> wow. I've waited a year so far, and I've got a temporary filling in, which is just about holding on. I'm too tight to go private, says Ian. Well, some people can't afford to go private. Getting a tooth out uh, privately will cost you, I don't know, 250 300 400 pounds. But if you've got to get a surgeon uh, at it, well, then uh, there's no end of expense. Then it just it goes up and up and up. Because you've got the anaesthetist and you've got the bed and you've got the uh, machine that goes bing. And you've got all of the uh, various uh, assorted drugs that go with it. Want to score some pot? And then you've got the surgeon's time and then the, um, the nice a cup of tea and a sandwich afterwards. Of course, it'll probably be soup in your case. Stuart texts, I've always fried duck eggs for 40 years and I've never been ill. They're very tasty. Well, I think that'd be a bit overdone if you fry them for 40 years. Four minutes, perhaps. And think of the gas he uses. Brian says, try boiling an ostrich egg. It'll keep you going for a month. No, it's, no, it's too much like something would have been living in it. Like a hen's egg, you can convince yourself that nothing would ever have lived in it. In it! But not an ostrich egg. That's, uh, ugh, no. No thanks. This is a no from me. Uh, how many more of these have I got from last night? Oh, quite a few. Oh, God, they're coming in again now. When will it ever end? How do they get my number? It's like painting the fourth road bridge trying to get through these texts. No, the fourth rail bridge. <laughs> Every single person in Scotland was uh, just picked up the phone and was smashing our number into their dial. Don't you know anything? Max tweets, chicken stuffed with haggis and drizzled with a pepper sauce is Balmoral chicken. Royals. What does that mean? PFT. Is, is that rude? Does, does PFT mean like something? <laughs> oh, right. Pff. As in pff, royals. I get it. Nick tweets, if you overboil an egg, the edge of the yolk turns black and the white becomes rubbery. You can overboil an egg and they're not nice to eat, says Nick. I hope you're writing this stuff down, uh, kids, because this is an educational show, no? No. Dorothy emails, goose eggs taste the same as chicken eggs. I fry them and cut the egg in half as it's so large. Well, what do you do with the other half? You can also buy uh, orgasmic eggs in Waitrose for £2.80 rather than £4. Orgasmic eggs! Oh. And they call them orgasmic eggs because the chicken uh, practically uh, laughs itself to sleep. It's having such a great life. <laughs> <laughs> Always look for orgasmic eggs on the shelf of your local supermarket. And you can thank me like No, wait. I've changed my mind. You can thank me now. Thank you. Tony says, Steve Allen was... Oh, God, with the Steve Allen all the time. What blows my mind is that people who listen to me also listen to Steve Allen. When do you sleep? Seriously, when do you ever go to sleep? How can you listen to me and Steve Allen? We're on a, a pretty much um, uh, opposite sides of the clock. They're vigilant. Nothing if not vigilant. Wide awake at all times. Tony says, Steve Allen wants to know where to get a good sandwich. Tell him about your sandwich when you get on your holiday. Oh, Florence. Yes. <laughs> You've got to go to Florence to get a good sandwich these days. That's just a fact. Um, and finally, oh, yeah, finally from yesterday. Wow, I got through them all. I'm doing very well. Mark says, you should look for the dentist, you should look for the nearest dental school and sign up with them. They are fifth year students that are supervised. In fact, they take more care than other dentists and they have at least double the time to do the work. If you need a lot of work done, they will set up weekly appointments or sometimes twice weekly until it's completed and you're charged at maximum NHS prices. Students, it's a no from me. And furthermore... No, 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 no. But thanks for the suggestion, Mark. Don't you ever text this show again. Students. I wouldn't even get a student to cut my hair. Are you kidding? Let's have a call in um, Peckham. Hello, Jan. Hello. Jan. <laughs> yeah, as I said, in the last two, I was knocked out by my dog. He put it, I went to put, he had his head under my chin and bang, oh. and knocked my two front ones. All the front ones was, whoa. What kind, of, what, kind, teeth, what kind of a dog is it? A boxer? <laughs> no, he's, she's gone now, bless her heart. Uh, no, she was Alsatian Rock Violet Labrador Cross Tina. 
Wow, an <laughs> Alsatian Rottweiler Labrador, Labrador cross. cross. And she was a bitch, and also oh, well, that's she not was nice. riddled with cancer, and she, she went on 15 years and five months. I'm still crying over her now. She's in February the 21st this year. Isn't 15 years and five months quite a long time for a dog? Well, for, well, I mean, normally, as Chrissy's crossbreed, she was a bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, no, she she done well, but as I said, I still miss her. Right. But now I've got now I've got a I've got a just a year old turned Jack Russell Par- Parsons dog. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Well, they, they they never stop moving. Uh, oh, fortunately, God, they're not I one of those. You they, you've chosen a dog that's not a yappy dog, so congratulations on that, uh, Karen. Not a yappy, barks no. all the time. And if you don't, if you don't pay attention to him, he'll just bark and I say, "Shut up!" I'm having a. He has the last <laughs> word. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> sure. He's down with my daughter at the moment. She, he sleeps with her at night time. You, 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 you say you up. say shut up to your dog, and it understands that and is quiet well, yeah, immediately. Yeah, he don't right. take no notice. He just barks at your Well, it, it can't understand what you're saying, Jan. Maybe if you slowed down a bit. Try decaffeinated coffee. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jan. Cheers, my dear. Already we started with the teeth again. Oh, no. No more teeth calls. Although what's really odd is the uh, tooth at the back of my head, which has given me uh, grief for a couple of months now, and uh, I've spent £1,500 just to keep my head. What? It, um, it hurts less uh, just after I eat. What's that about? You'd think it would hurt more. But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. 0345 6060 973, text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. You're joking. No joke. Simon tweets, I love your programme, but what will you talk about when Bodge is finally kicked out? Oh, there'll be plenty. There'll be no end of things. I mean, apart from anything else, uh, World War Three will uh, cause the world to become a smoking ruin. So we'll have that to talk about. You, you think the waiting list to uh, get seen by a doctor is long now? You, you wait till uh, all the hospitals are, are flat uh, and uh, on fire. Manchester. Hello, Alan. Oh, hi, Nick. Alan. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, when you mentioned about the athletes last night and what you've read and heard. About what? Uh, about the athletes being in the village. You said, you said you've said you read it, like, all the different athletes. What did they get up to when they're in there? Oh, what, you mean it's um, a, a sexathon after they've finished their, uh, their various um, uh, competitions? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was watching it today, and half of the athletes, they, they used to be German, and now the Dutch, because they're married. Wait, and then the wait, 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 back up. Half of the athletes used to be German, and now they're Dutch because they're married. Yeah. What does that mean? And then when they, what, what does and that mean? <laughs> and Half then, of them used to be German, and now they're Dutch because they're married. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, they, they, they must have done in the village, and then... It's gone up to what you were on about last night. And... Right, you've got no idea. OK, good call there, uh, Alan. Excellent work. How does uh, how do these people get my number? That's that's what I just don't understand. It's 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 a mystery. Johnny texts, now that Jacko Smug has been appointed as Minister for Brexit Opportunities and Government Efficiency, surely he'll be most proud to be crowned as a bogey man. Yes, he really is. What? Bogey? Oh, B B O G E. Brexit opportunities and efficiency. Oh my God, is this the level that we're at now? <laughs> I can't believe it. It's not my fault. Or maybe it is. Daryl says, I think subjecting the people uh, people to endless Barry Manilow is a violation of their human rights. I mean, surely it's a form of torture. What a great story. New Zealand authorities blasted Barry Manilow and turned on water sprinklers in an attempt to disperse coronavirus vaccine protesters camped outside Parliament. Water sprinklers! <laughs> Initial moves to try to flush out several hundred protesters who have been camped on the grounds in Wellington since Tuesday had little effect. Who knew that New Zealand was so interesting? The prote- I thought they just had scenery. The protesters who have been voicing their opposition to coronavirus vaccine requirements 
responded to the soaking from the sprinklers by digging trenches and, and installing makeshift drain pipes to divert the water. Wow! In for the long haul. I mean, that's just... <laughs> that seems very organised, doesn't it? For hippies. When a downpour struck on Saturday, their numbers only grew. Are you paying attention to this, you um, uh, uh, fair-weather protesters? Protesters bought in bales of straw, which they scattered on the increasingly sodden grounds at Parliament. Some shouted, others danced, danced, and one group performed an indigenous Maori hacker. By I always thought that seemed a bit rude, didn't it? I mean, OK, so it's part of their history, but what's that got to do with rugby? It just looks rude to me. Why are they allowed to do that? And we can't, um, you know... <laughs> We can't, uh, you know, uh, join in with songs about you're going home in a bleeping ambulance. That sort of thing. You know, traditional British songs. Some shouted, others danced. One group performed an indigenous Ma Maori hacker. By evening, Parliament Speaker Trevor Mallard had come up with a new plan to make the protesters uncomfortable using a sound system to blast out vaccine messages, Barry Manilow songs and the 1980s hit Macarena on a repeat loop. <laughs> And were protesters um, uh, cowed by this? No. Of course not. Protesters responded by playing their own tunes, including Twisted Sisters, We're Not Gonna Take It. Rock and roll! And so I looked up Twisted Sisters, We're Not Gonna Take It. Guess what the first line is? The first line is, and I quote, Guess what? I've got a fever. What? Mm hmm. That's what the first line is. <laughs> I mean, could they have picked a better one than that? We've got the right to choose it. There ain't no way we'll lose it. This is our life. This is our song. We'll fight the powers that be. Just don't pick our destiny because you don't know us. You don't belong. OK, so some of those lyrics uh, make sense in this context, but not many. But then we are talking about Twisted Sister. <laughs> Barry Manilow. I think that um, Barry Manilow has been unfairly maligned. Barry Manilow is responsible for a lot of really, really great pop tunes. Copacabana being one of them, probably the uh, preeminent one. How could anybody hear that on the radio and uh, not tap a, a toe to it? Natalie emails, Yes, the Speaker of the House here in New Zealand has employed some interesting methods to rid Parliament grounds of wingnuts. <laughs> He left the grass sprinklers on all night, played Barry Manilow on a continuous loop of COVID public health messages, and this morning, singer James Blunt tweeted to the New Zealand police, give me a shout if this doesn't work. <laughs> he has a history of um, self-deprecation as James Blunt. If um, I liked his music, I, I might appreciate him more. But, you know, unfortunately... You're beautiful. Dom text, my dentist had a posh waiting room for private patients and what felt like a pauper's waiting room for the NHS patients. It was absolutely dreadful. <laughs> the poor door. That's a bit much. My dentist doesn't have a waiting room anymore. I, 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 I don't know whether they're, they're just too tight to provide chairs or whether there has been some government edict gone around that said uh, you are not allowed to have a waiting room anymore because of, you know, the invisible menace. But it seems a bit odd. Because, as you know, if you've ever been to the dentist, they never, ever, 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 ever see you on time. As in, ever. I waited an hour in a place that doesn't have chairs. I was a bit disappointed, to put it mildly. I wasn't angry. I was just disappointed. How can you have a, 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 a medical facility without a waiting room? Uh, that is mystifying to me. So what, what are you supposed to do? Well, what I did was just sat on the floor in the hall like a tramp. Um, Liverpool. Hello, Vincent. How are you, Nick? You're all right, mate? Yeah, good, thanks. No, that's brilliant. I said, uh, I was just saying to one of the lads there when I got through, I said they were playing Barry Manilow. I was devastated because I paid 80 nickel a year before that to watch him on the Palladium. Wow. 
£80, I pounds. Was, 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 that, was that the face price of the ticket, or did you pay a scout? No, no, it? £79 was for the popcorn, right. uh, <laughs> but, but it, was worth every, it was worth every penny, to be worth, honest. Worth every kernel. Yeah, well, he does a it, good but, tune. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, I couldn't stop clapping, he was that bad. To be honest, <laughs> right. Okay, I think I think we're straying into um, stand-up comic routine there, uh, Vincent. So I'll I'll save you the trouble. Thanks a lot, mate. Peter texts when Boris Johnson is filling out a questionnaire. If he puts the answers in order, will he get extra points? Well, that's um, that's a good question. Are there any experts in that regard? And it was thirty or thirty-five questions. The first questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult, uh, like a memory question. It's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera, TV. So they say, could you repeat that? So I said, yeah. So it's woman, camera, TV. Okay, that's very good. If you get it in order, you get extra points. Okay, now he's asking you other questions. And then 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes later, they say, remember the first question? Not the first, but the 10th question. Give us that again. Can you do that again? And you go, woman, man, person, man, camera, TV. If you get it in order, you get extra points. They said nobody gets it in order. It's actually not that easy, but for me it was easy. And that's not an easy question. In other words, they ask it to you. They give you five names and you have to repeat them. And that's okay. If you repeat them out of order, it's okay. but, But, you know, it's not as good. But then when you go back about 20, 25 minutes later and they say, go back to that question. They don't tell you this. Go back to that question and repeat them. Can you do it? And you go, camera, man, person, woman, TV. They say, that's amazing. How did you do that? I do it because I have like a good memory because I'm cognitively there. He's cognitively there. Trust me. I'm like a smart person. He's like a smart person. If you get it in order, you get extra points. Extra points for getting it in order. You know, fortunately, Donald Trump will be the president of the United States uh, again. I can be more presidential than anybody. I betcha, betcha, betcha. And he will therefore take the eye off us. We will no longer be the laughing stock of the world. This is just a brief uh, period that we have to uh, suffer that indignity. It's but a blip, ladies and gentlemen. He hasn't gone away. He's just swum out to sea. He'll be back. (laughs) So if we could just hang on, if we can just get through this period of being the laughing stock of the world, then uh, Donnie is going to take over and put us out of our misery. Oh, shut up! Thanks, Donnie. We appreciate it. Your husband's not the uh, most powerful man in the world anymore, Melania. I don't care. She's actually not that bothered. Any thoughts, Kanye? whoop dee dee scoop poop I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> hey, you know, this uh, podcast is... This show, rather, is available as a podcast. We squirt it up the internet uh, almost as soon as it's over. We take the news and the ads out, which means it takes less time to listen to. You'll use less electricity, and you won't have to sell one of your children to pay your fuel bill. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. It's called Nick Abbott, The Whole Show, and is one of three podcasts that I do, all of which will become clear as though by magic if you Google my name, Nick Abbott, and podcasts. If you get Global Player, stick it up your phone uh, from your favourite app store, then you'll find that and many others, boatloads of podcasts and all the stations that we do on there. Global Player, stick it up your phone and thank me later. Or now, as is your won't. 0345 6060 973. It's 10.30 on LBC. The news headlines with Zora Solomon. Leading Britain's conversation. LBC with Nick Abbott. I really like you. Do you like me? Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, Dude tweets, you have put me off eggs for life thanks to this, thanks to the discussion that you had yesterday, says Dude. Yeah! Dude! Is it uh, the uh, part of the discussion which was about where they came from? Disgusting. Yeah, did you not know that? Best not to think about it, Dude. Waztex, just got home from shopping and I've got baking paper instead of foil. Oh. 
I'm having a day. What am I going to wrap my salmon sandwiches in, says Waz. Well, how about wrapping them in your gums? Eat them. Stop whining. Wrap them in baking paper. I mean, it won't seal itself. You have a little bit of uh, sellotape. It'd be perfect. Actually, what's really, really good and is one of my favourite products in the whole wide world ever is baking paper and foil combined into the one thing. It's great. I mean, you can wrap anything in it and it just lasts forever. You can uh, wrap uh, one thing and then uh, you don't have to throw it away when you finish with it. You can uh, wipe it down and then they use it for something else. It's a very, very good product, but you can't buy it any anywhere. Well, you can't buy it in supermarkets. For some reason, they don't stock it in supermarkets anymore. It's baking paper and foil combined. And I have to actually get it from an evil online shopping facility. Boo! I, I couldn't find it anywhere else. Forced to. Caroline says, try a fried egg on noodles with chilli sauce. Yum. Uh... Hmm. A mice. Barnes. James. Nick. James. Good evening. Listening to that little uh, segment about uh, Donald Trump, it yeah. brought back memories of wasn't life simple in those days. It was funnier. Um, it was funny, exactly. Well, uh, initially, Nick, it, you know, initially it was funnier, and then it was frightening. Yeah. And then it became funny. But Nick, you know, joking aside, despite yes. everything we know about that man, mm -hmm. um, I am convinced and Lord Dannett today was speaking to Matt Fry. Lord he didn't mention, uh, uh, yes. uh, And he didn't mention Trump. But if Trump would have been uh, uh, president, he would have made sure that Putin knew... Wait a minute, what, what's this got to do with Lord Dannett? You said he didn't mention Trump? But you're, he didn't mention but you're, Trump, but he was... But you're bringing him into your argument anyway. I know, well, there you go. But he, uh, Lord Dannett today said that behind the scenes, he would hope that all the, the, the presidents and the prime ministers are assuring Putin yeah. mm. that there is no way that they're going to allow Ukraine to join well, NATO. It's got, nothing, it's got nothing to do with us, OK? We, we, yeah. we sent Liz Truss. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> I mean, that's the level of our commitment. That's all you need to know. Exactly. But, that's all you need to know. But I, I am sure that if Trump would have been president, mm. none of this would have happened. There would be no build-up of troops that, where there is... Why are you sure about that? Trump's, I, Trump seemed to I, be Vladimir Putin's best friend made, in the whole wide world. He was, but I just think that he would have made sure... How would he have done NATO, that? Because he would have said to NATO, there is no way that we're going to allow Ukraine to join NATO, and quite rightly. And that was where I got Lord Dannett into it, because Lord Dannett said that in his opinion, and he used to be head of the armed forces, that when the uh, Soviet Union collapsed, all the European uh, countries, Eastern European, uh, aligned themselves with the Western NATO, except Ukraine, right. who aligned themselves with Russia. And he said quite rightly today, there is no way Ukraine should any way be allowed into NATO, and we should ensure that Putin knows that that ain't going to happen. Why not? But, just, but why, though? I mean, if the people want it, then why can't they have it? The, 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 the question is, Nick, is that if Putin is saying, and, and you can say, well, it's bribery, but is it not behind the scenes, would it not be better to say to Ukraine... Uh, we well, are not going to be allowed to uh, come into NATO and make sure that Putin knows that, and then it will all be over. That's, that's well, just I, give I just give Vladimir Putin everything he wants, and then it'll all be over. Yeah, that sounds like a great I, plan. Well, what if the people not, want it, James? What the, if the people want it, do we know whether the people want it, Nick? Answer the question. What if the people, if the people want, want it? want it, uh, listen, we, the people, want Mr uh, uh, Johnson out of... Downing Street. But well, some of happen. us, some of us, a lot of us, uh, we all do. So, uh, so you're saying that because it's not going to happen, then it should not happen. I'm saying that I think that it would be sensible for the world if to just give uh, Vladimir Putin anything he wants. Yeah, great, not, great plan. No, not, it's not about giving him anything he wants. It's you can understand he doesn't want Ukraine to be a NATO. Uh, 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 no, NATO, actually, right? I can't understand. You, you explain it to me. What, what's he f pretending to be frightened of? That we're going to invade well, Russia? No, well, no, there's, he's, there's nothing for him to be frightened of. But he is delusional and paranoid. 
Right, so we, so we give a delusional there. paranoid anything that he wants because that's going to no. placate him. Do you seriously think that if we give him this, that he's going to sit back in his chair and think, oh, no, now life is great, I don't have any further demands? I think that, yes, he will, actually. I, I actually do. Well, I think James, this is all... James, what you know about uh, paranoid psychotics is, is yes. worth writing on the back of a stamp. Probably true. Probably true. But, Nick... You know, do you think that there is... Cause there, they had an expert on Channel 4 News last week. Oh, an expert. Uh, a, a military expert. You oh, know, there's yeah. millions of them. Mm, yeah, there are. And, yeah. All, all, but, all but, of whom disagree with, uh, with, with all of the others. But go exactly. On. Well, it's a bit like the people who were telling us about the, the virus and the vaccines. And, you know, everybody... You can always get a scientist to tell you something yeah. that is the contra contrary to the last one. Precisely. But he was... But he was saying that, you know, there's 100,000 troops along a 2,500-kilometre border. That, that's not enough to, to have any type of invasion. Sure, they could have an excursion, but they're not going to take... Uh, they're an not going to do excursion. anything. excursion? What? That's what he was saying. It, you know, but why... 100,000 troops is not enough to have an invasion. It, de it, depend it depends what you're invading. A hundred thousand seems like a pretty big number to me. I mean, it's it, and what are Not, they? What sort of weaponry are they using? You could have one person with a nuclear weapon, and that would you, be enough. You could, you could. But Nick, you know, at the end of the day, we we do not want to start having a war that escalates. We're not because, starting it. Putin no, we're not is starting, starting it. it. He is, but at the same time, Nick, would it not be prudent? At this so just give him everything he wants. No, well, no I, I, I seriously doubt that it would be prudent to give for somebody like Vladimir Putin an inch because he will take a mile. So you would, uh, so you would agree that they should say to Putin, if we want, if Ukraine wants to join, join NATO and we agree, yeah. they, that's fine by us. What's it? Mate. What's it got to do with Putin? Uh, it, it because, like I said, the man is to not think that NATO is expansionist and thinks that NATO is a threat and no, they will be... I, I don't believe that he thinks anything of the sort. I think he's using it as an excuse for um, trying to cover up his various uh, political travails at home because he's not the most popular man in no, he's Russia not, and by, they're very by a long chalk. And so a little light war will get the people behind the flag. Well, apparently, a lot of the generals are very unhappy about what's going on. Correct. That's what yeah. I would, yeah. Uh, at and least the ones that are still breathing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think that all this stuff with Boris Johnson saying this is the most dangerous moment in our history since. I mean, I think this is all nonsense. I don't think there will be a war. I don't think he will invade. And I think this is all flabber and uh, bluster. Yeah, flabber and shows. flabber and bluster. It's which is what, what was going through my mind from the moment that this call started. You have got <laughs> no idea what you're talking about, James. Your answer to this problem was. Donald Blumin Trump. Well, you know, but you like the man. You, no, I you don't. Know, I, I hate him with a passion. He was funny for a while, and then he got completely out of control. It has gotten totally out of control. Totally out of control. But anyway, thanks a lot, James. <laughs> if, the, if the answer is Donald Trump, what on earth is the question? O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three, text eight four eight five zero. Email Nick A at lbc.co.uk, and if you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. Bruce tweets: Not the fourth rail bridge, Nick. It's the fourth bridge. Plain and simple. You should know this, having lived there in your youth. Yeah, I used to ski with uh, a view of the uh, of the bridge, up in a place called Hill End, and. Um, I used to go there uh, after school, and um, as was the case just generally, I mean, growing up in Edinburgh, if I, I, I've been there since school and was just astonished at how beautiful it is. Of course, when you're at school, you don't notice any of that stuff. The view from the top of Hill End is astounding, and I didn't even see it. I spent endless hours up there. It's a uh, uh, like one of those nylon ski slopes. Um, which you so you can ski there all year round. It snows right enough in the winter, and you can ski on the snow, um, which is very, very slippy and dangerous. 
and then you can ski on the uh, the nylon bristles. But the view from uh, up the top of there is just absolutely incredible. And I never saw it at all until I went back as an adult, as a grown-up. The not the fourth rail bridge, just the fourth bridge. There's okay, so there's the fourth bridge and there's the fourth road bridge. But I think most people would say the fourth rail bridge to differentiate between the two, Bruce. So you can stick it. <laughs> And I mean that in the nicest possible way. 0345 6060 973, text 84850, email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, LBC with Nick Abbott. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. It's a radio show, dear. Chris says, uh, with all this talk about eggs, I thought I should ask your advice. Why is it that my favourite substance, chocolate, seems to be frequently mistreated by the strange addition of salt? What's going on? Yeah, that gets my goat, Chris. I go into a uh, supermarket near me and uh, they've got uh, every kind of chocolate that is available to humankind except the one that I want, which is just plain, plain. I just want plain, plain chocolate. I don't want salt in it. I don't want almonds in it. I don't want uh, fruit in it. I don't want toffee in it. I don't want chilli in it. Who wants chilli in chocolate? I'll tell you who. No one. That's who. Stop mucking about with my, my treats. Couldn't agree more, Chris. Thanks for bringing that important issue to my attention. Scunthorpe. Hello, Tim. Hey, how you doing, Nick? Good, thanks. Good to speak to you again, mate. Um... James, the previous caller, I think, oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if he's a veteran or not, but with, with respect to the guy, um, he, he said excursion. Well, to me, that would be a few of the, like, a couple of hundred of these Russian troops going over the border right, and hitting the first village, having a few beers, having yeah. some goulash, a and holiday. pick up a few flowers, then, yeah, then go back over the road and say, oh, right. thanks, that was it. I think he meant incursion. But anyway, <clears throat> that aside... Excursion. Um, eight, incursion. Eight, eight, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's uh, right. But to, yeah. <laughs> tonight, though, um, it was, there was a news post, and there was this uh, Vladimir Zelensky, you know, the Ukrainian president, and he, one of the, he was watching one of his, like, battlefield exercises going on, publicity, and that, he did say he's a bit concerned, quite a bit concerned about about the UK and um, and uh, Bo- 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 the President of the United States, Biden, giving it um, a bit big lips about withdrawing personnel from um, you know the the the, uh, the embassies and things like that, and asking oh, yeah. multi- multinationals to come back, you know, yeah. and to get home because there's you no know, chance of you. And he said, "Well, this is causing panic in my country." He says, "I, I don't want you to cause panic and, and what have you." And <laughs> it made me chuckle. I'm afraid when when you know there's, I mean, look. 130,000 troops, and I go back to what James just said a minute ago, though, and that's my point. Uh, 130,000 troops, they've got missile battalions, they've got what used to be called shock armies. Uh, you know, in the, in the 80s, I was in the military, and, you know, it was all Berlin walls up then, and, you know, they've got shock armies, they've got sort of the same tactics, they've got missile battalions, they've got yeah, they got, in the, they got the tanks suit. and bullets and uh, yeah. guns and, and all of that stuff. And just to let James know, if he looks at the map at the minute where, where there's been some um, proven sort of reports on what's been going on there, uh, I've got family in Romania, um, and they are, uh, I'm not Romanian, but I've got uh, my wife's family in Romania, and they, they get information, obviously. I mean, they're closer to the, the score on things. And, um, I mean, basically, by, from the, uh, the Crimea, from the east border, and, and obviously Belarus, um, James was saying, you know, 130,000 isn't enough to embark on an invasion. Well, of course as it you is. Said, course, well, massively, you could do it with half the troops. The point is, at the end of the day, it's, it is almost... I mean, there's that tri-border, and that was another interesting, funny thing tonight on, on, on the news. I watched a, a news report from a foreign news station, and they'd gone into a village, you know. There's a, there's a, there's a border crossing that crosses. It's a tri-border. Uh, a road from Russia leads to it, and Belarus, and then the Ukraine. So these reporters went a mile and a half down the Ukrainian road to the first village. Now, it's got about 150 people in it. And they said, people don't want to talk about it. We'll be knocking on every door and nobody's coming to the door. Mate, <laughs> they're not there. They've done a runner. Well, so I think maybe, Mr. Zelensky yeah. needs to look, and I wonder what information he's putting out. But James, what? listen to what? me, mate. Yeah, I've been I... in the forces, and, and it's... It's ridiculous. You, you can easily... It's a straight road from Belarus right through yeah. Kiev. So, don't, don't get excited you know. about what he said. Like I said before, his answer no, to no, this no, problem was off. Donald Trump. So I think that's all we need to know. All right, good work. Thanks a lot, Tim. Everybody's getting freaked out about this, um, like it's going to be World War Three. Relax. It's just going to be an excursion. <laughs> to a local raffia-making factory, something like that. 
Or some wine tasting, perhaps. Booze. Exactly. Nothing to be afraid about. I heard that um, Kiev was um, uh, bizarrely quiet. There was uh, videos on the World Wide Way from Kiev today, and everybody was going about their business. Meanwhile, the uh, message from the uh, her ma- from Her Majesty's government in this country: emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Yeah, we sent Liz Truss over there, <laughs> <laughs> and she took her hat. That'll teach them. She didn't even get to sit at that stupidly huge desk that Vlad the Insaner made uh, Macron sit at. I mean, I know that it was supposedly a COVID thing, but it absolutely, totally and definitely wasn't a COVID thing. He's nuts. (laughs) Uh, Stella says, I had a trainee hairdresser dye my hair and she did a brilliant job. I would even have a student surgeon if I could pay cheaper, says Stella. Says Stella. Stella! A student surgeon. You're... (laughs) Yeah. mm. Well, it's entirely possible, of course, that you will have a student surgeon next time you're under the knife. Uh, After you've uh, had the knockout drops, anything could happen, Stella. Alison says, how come Johnson and his partners in crime, brackets, allegedly, get a questionnaire in seven days to fill it in? I bet none of the thousands of ordinary people who were fined were investigated in this way. Has Johnson been asked to do it with an actual pen, or are they letting him do it in crayon? I bet they're letting him do it in pencil, so he can rub out the uh, mistakes. You know, if he uh, mixes up any of his stories, forgets what forgets what his truth is this week. It has to be, has to be written truthfully. <laughs> right. Uh, he'll have to have it, uh, some of his people explain to him what that means. Uh, Streatham. Hello, John. Oh, Hello. my God. Are you under attack? Me? Yes, John. Sorry, I was just cooking a brisket. Um, a, a brisket? Yes. Uh, I, I look, look, what happened is I, I've been listening to you for years and I might have slightly misjudged the call because I... When I called your boy on the desk, <laughs> uh, right, th- there was talk of the war being discussed, and you're oh, yeah. like you're like me, sort of a lefty hippie. And I thought I am you- not a lefty hippie. I am left wing on some issues and right wing on others, and central uh, with um, you know with consideration to most of uh, the issues that might uh, come up, just like. Any other person, if you are only right wing in everything you yeah. think, or left wing, then that means you haven't thought about anything. Or you'd be elected to this current government. Yes. By the but no, so this is what I mean. I think I misjudged the call because I've only ever fallen out with you once when we were talking about what's a good salary on the 80 grand issue. So I, I think your position is what that we should do Putin on the field, like we should attack, right? I th- you think I think we should attack Vladimir Putin or de- or defend or defend the Ukrainians? Is that your position or not? What does defending the Ukraine actually involve attacking Vladimir Putin? Well, I mean, it will be. I'll see. This is all oh, we're going to fall out. I was going to have a jovial call about Pretty Patel, but this might be a slightly more tense one. My, my issue is this, right? Yeah, my my, Every... my issue, John, is I'm not remotely interested in whether we fall out or not. <laughs> I'm not concerned in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Okay, I don't I'll, know I'll... who you are. Yeah, well, okay. The point is this: whenever we've been attacked over the past twenty years, right? When we were attacked on July the seventh, for example, we didn't attack back, even though. The July 7th bombers had trained on bases in Pakistan, Who were right? we going to... We weren't attacked by a country. No, but they had... They had. They trained and they had support from well, within if, a Well, if country. they had trained in Bristol, would we launch an yeah. attack on Bristol? It's, oh, that's not... Oh, see, oh, you're, you're in a bad mood today. No, it's... No, <laughs> it's I'm not in a bad mood. If you say an asinine thing, I'm not just going to nod my head and agree with you. Who so, were so we going you... to attack? We should have bombed Pakistan. We should have bombed Pakistan because somebody we... from Pakistan no. attacked us. No, they were no, they were from Leeds. We have had. Right, well, I, here's a better idea. Let's bomb Leeds. We have we have had suicide attacks from people with bases in Libya. I worked with in this area networks in Libya, networks yes, in Pakistan, in Saudi Arabia. Oh. Let's bomb Saudi right. Arabia. Oh, absolutely. We should have bombed Saudi Arabia before we bombed Iraq. We go into wars to help the military 
industrial complex and then this presented to people such as yourself and you buy into it as being this brave fight. We keep involving ourselves. John, in you just and- told me we should bomb Pakistan and Saudi Arabia. Of course, yeah, the people who are bombing us. And you're, a Libyan. No, a they, Libyan, they we, specifically were not bombing us. People from those countries were bombing us. With, with, with state support. I mean, how naive if you have If you to be. walked down the, the road of uh, Streatham and somebody from the east end of London took your wallet, right. would you want to right. bomb the east end of London? I'm not a state or a state actor, you silly man. We have had children blown up in this country from networks within... We bombed Libya when Libya was not a threat to us. We destabilised a secular dictator there. Right. We were going to, we were going to bomb Syria. So on, on, the one hand you, on the one hand, you seem to be saying that we shouldn't get involved in wars, and on the other hand, you, you seem to be thinking that we should start wars where, wherever, what? in whatever corner of the world, we find a disagreement. No, when we when we are attacked, when we are when we but are attacked by a country, perhaps, or, or by or by individuals. Who are John, you are out of your mind. We would bomb a nuclear power because some people from that country did a bad thing here. Wow. Okay, if that's what it takes to fall out with you, then uh, consider us fallen out. That's in a, in a packed schedule. That's the stupidest thing I've heard in a good long while. <laughs> and uh, I, I dispute the uh, assertion that I am in a bad mood, but if, if I am, then it's you that put me there. Maybe I should bomb you. Can you believe it? 0345 6060 973. Maybe his uh, briskets disagreed with him. I know I do. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. What kind of a person cooks brisket at this time of night, anyway? <laughs> and what's a brisket when it's at home? Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. You bet your life it is. 0345 6060 973. Josh texts, I prescribe eating for your tooth, Nick. You'll be morbidly obese, but painlessly so. I don't really understand the, um, the, the concept there, Josh. Although, weirdly... Eating does make my tooth feel better. So you may have something there. Uh, Domino text, isn't it obvious? We can listen to you and Steve Allen on podcasts. Also, I've been catching up with your 2020 shows when COVID-19 was starting, and it's a really strange listen. Well, funny you should say that, Domino. But um, I have uh, put together on a weekly basis a thing called the Nick Abbott Habit, which is clips, funny clips, the, all the, like, the concentrated funny bits of old shows. And um, I am at the moment going through the beginning of 2020 when we were just hearing word from uh, this invisible medicine from China. China. And Donald Trump was still in position. And it's just, um, it's so bizarre to go through those old shows and pulling out clips and knowing what was to come. Of course, we didn't know then, if only we did. Uh, if what? Well, if only we did, there would be absolutely nothing we could do about it because it would, you know, it was, uh, our reality would have remained the same. But the podcast is called The Nick Abbott Habit, and if you have a half hour and you wish to be amused, I think you'll love it. Ask for it by name on an internet near you, The Nick Abbott Habit. Uh, Richmond. Hello, Claire. Hello. Claire. I've been waiting ages to speak to you. Wait, waiting ages? Stop whining. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm great, mate. All right. Okay. I've got what was going to... Caller, call uh, you about. Well, it certainly has been uh, worth the wait. (laughs) Well, basically, you were talking about teeth and dentists, weren't you? Yeah. Well, my brother has uh, has had all his uh, top teeth taken out yesterday. Is that wise? uh, Why? Why did he have his top teeth taken out? 
Well, because he's got very bad gum disease and uh, they had to come out. Okay. Um, Don't tell me anymore. And, all right. Okay, <laughs> I'll forget that then. Next thing is, why doesn't Steve Allen um, make his own baker's sandwich and take it to work with him and heat it up in the microwave or something? Why? Who makes his bacon sandwich? Well, can't he make it? But where does bacon sandwich come from? Are you saying that Steve Allen ordinarily eats a bacon sandwich? Wait, well, you were talking before, about an hour ago, yeah. <laughs> about Steve Allen and how he can't have a baker's sandwich at work for some reason. Did I say that? I was going, yeah, he did. I don't think and so. He's always, oh, he did. I don't know. Uh, I, you, you must have been waiting for a really, really long time because you, you were waiting for <laughs> um, from, from a previous <laughs> show. I haven't talked no. a word about Steve Allen's bacon sandwich. You did. I you certainly did. did nothing of the you sort. Did. I wrote it down. Well, okay, so you that makes it that true. Steve Allen can't, sorry? Just because you wrote it down doesn't make it true any more than Boris Johnson writing down the answers to a questionnaire makes the uh, answers true. Don't mention him. I can't stand him. Who, Boris Johnson? Yeah, yeah. You don't want me to mention Boris Johnson? You can mention him, but uh, no, you did. You said Steve Allen yeah. can't get a baker sandwich at work, mm -hmm. and he's always going on about it. So because yeah, I, I listened to him. I, I most certainly uh, did nothing of the sort, Claire. Oh. You're hearing things. No, <laughs> anyway. Um, and, you know, you're talking about Afghanistan. <laughs> so we've had teeth, bacon <laughs> sandwich, and now Afghanistan. Wow, you are all you, over the map, Claire. No, I'm not. Um, but you were talking about Afghanistan, weren't you? I wasn't, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well... I was just going to say that I work with a lady from Afghanistan and she's going back there next week. Is that wise? I, no, I keep telling her not to go, but no. she hasn't seen her mother in four years. And uh, she's, uh, sorry. She's determined. She's, uh, yeah, yeah, she is, and right. I'm worried about her. Yeah, with because, justification. Uh, I lost my mother recently. Right. And uh, I just think that it's... Uh, uh, you know, she's going back on her own. It's going to be quite difficult for her to... Yeah, I'll say. <clears throat> yeah, anyway. Well, wish her all the best from me. Tell, tell us who... Uh, send us a postcard, all right? All right. Thanks yeah, a lot, thanks. Claire. So a postcard of one of the, uh, the the beautiful ruined scenes in Afghanistan, if anything is actually still standing enough to uh, have a picture taken of it. Uh, Dominant... No, read that one. Cheryl emails. We've got three greyhounds rescued from Spain. And at first they couldn't understand English, so we had to speak Spanish to them. However, now they've learned what shut up means. <laughs> it means in English. Well, shut up is English. You mean what, um, whatever the Spanish for shut up is, now they understand the, okay. Something like that. I, I kind of got lost to there myself. Oh, shut up! Will do, Donnie. Will do. David texts, maybe they could play Barry Manilow on the Ukraine border. That's a good idea, David. I'm not sure that Barry Manilow would actually work as um, a method to uh, um, d dissipate a crowd. I think I'd quite get into that. I mean, if it was just the same song over and over again, that would get a little bit annoying after about an hour or so. But I don't know, if they put on Barry Manilow's greatest hits, I think I'd stick around and, uh, you know, enjoy it a while. On the other hand, if it was Twisted Sister, which is what the crowd uh, played in response, apparently, in New Zealand, how they played it back, I have got no idea. Maybe they, uh, they played it through their phones. Put, put, put their uh, little uh, Bluetooth headphones on really loud. You know, that annoying sound that you get when you sit next to somebody on a train. <laughs> Twisted Sister they played. I mean, that would have made me up and leave. But ba Barry Manilow, not so much. Ricky texts, uh, we now know not to use ABBA to get rid of the bodger. Yeah, that's right. He's, uh, he's immune to um, ABBA. Immune to our protestations. Feltham. Hello, Ian. Yep. Ian. Hello. Hello, Nick. Ian. Um, you were talking about big numbers with James earlier. Uh, when you talking about Russia, Ukraine... President Putin. Now, here's a very big number for you: twenty-seven big, big million numbers. What are you talking about? Big yeah. numbers. Well, you said something to James about that's a big number when you were talking about 
two callers ago about Russia, Ukraine, President oh, yeah. Putin, right. Biden. A hundred thousand uh, troops massed on the border. He didn't think that was very yeah. many people. It sounded like a no. lot of people well, to me. I, I tell you what's a lot of people. What? 27 million. 27 Does million that people. That sounds like a lot of people. Yes. Now, that's the number of people who died between 1941 and 1945 in Operation Barbarossa and traumatised the Soviet Union, and particularly the Russian people. And they've still got that psyche of worry, and then they're going to have a hostile nation armed with Western arms next door. Hostile? It's like, hostile? Who's hostile? Well, it is. It's hostile... The, if you've got Western weapons from a hostile nation, put no, there, no one's going to attack Russia. Why would you think that they, that they would? Well, I think that's what we all thought in 1941. There was a pact between Stalin and Hitler, and that all ended well. No, it didn't. The, no, well, it not, didn't not for did Hitler, it? anyway, or, or for Stalin. No. Come to think of it. Yeah, and uh, this is like the feeling Ireland have for the English. They're traumatised from what England's done to them over the centuries. Yeah, well, no doubt. So, I mean, the whole world is traumatised from what uh, England has done to it over the centuries. Yeah. So I, this is, and also there was an agreement between Reagan and Gorbachev after the dis dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Warsaw Pact. There will be no advance eastward of NATO. We've gone back on that. Yeah, and if, the, if, the, right. if the people in those individual countries want to join NATO, then who is to say that they can't? If that well, is what the people, the people in, want. Well, the people in Crimea... No, well, it's got nothing to do with it. They took they uh, took Crimea specifically because, um, uh, because of the uh, explanation that you've just given. I had to um, bleep it out because he forgot where he was. Well, he's just a very angry person. <laughs> Here, Ian, I tell you what, here's a good piece of advice. I want you to write this down. Stop reading Facebook. It's not doing you any good. Most of the things that you are reading on Facebook were written by a robot. Affirmative. You're being had, Ian. So many people like that. There's so many Putin apologists. What's really amazing to me is that, oh, you know, he's just this poor put upon. Uh, he's, he's a nice guy. Yeah, go um, have tea with him. I double dare you. Paul Tex, being soaking wet and dancing to Barry Manilow songs is some people's idea of a good time on a Saturday night. Obviously, the police in New Zealand have never heard I Know a Song That Will Get On Your Nerves by Joe Pasquale. Neither have I. And uh, furthermore, I don't wish to. What's that got to do with it? Lucy texts, uh, could play Scylla Black at the mob. My mother-in-law, bless her, my mother-in-law, bless her, was watching her on TV. She asked me, what is she murdering now? She then said, sometimes I'm glad I'm deaf. <laughs> oh, it's not very nice. <laughs> Uh, Gary tweets, help, I'm the only sane one on this planet. Are there any kindly extraterrestrials out there uh, to uh, get me out of here? Well, if you find them, uh, Gary, ask them if you've got a spare seat for me. Let's get out of here. 0345 6060 Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. What's he got to be depressed about? Uh, Putin apologists. They're everywhere. Uh, let's see what this one's like. Regent's Park. Hello, Vance. Hello, Nick. Thanks, as usual, for keeping me sane. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Nick, um, last Saturday I mentioned Florence because it was mentioned in the levelling up white paper, and that led you to your brilliant riff on the sandwich bar in oh, Florence. Oh, so And when yummy. you do that, when you do that, you really sparkle. It's one of the bright spots of your show, so thank you very well, when much. when I talk about food. <laughs> no, when you, riff, when you riff on something, you know. Right. <laughs> um, I'd but like to go back serious. there. I mean, now I'm thinking about it. Like, a, ooh. And yeah. my glamorous assistant last week pulled up a, a couple of pictures of people proffering their sandwich to the internet, taking pictures of it and sticking it up the World Wide Web. <laughs> and, oh, my God, it looks so fabulous. 
<laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> hey, Nick, um, on something serious. Um, ju- Hang on a minute. Um, wait, wait, wait. Just one second. Don't do it again. Yeah. I, I see him um, rooting around the uh, internet. He's going to pull up another pic. Don't, just, <laughs> don't do it again. Take that off my screen. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> It's called the Al Antico something or other. Oh, absolutely (laughs) fantastic. You've never seen anything like it in your life. Get it off my screen. I'm salivating already. Yes, me too. (laughs) Dribbling I am. (laughs) Nick, um, on something more serious, though, um, Gladstone once said, justice delayed is justice denied. And doesn't this apply to the deliberate delay in slowing up Sue Gray's report, the huge delays in NHS treatment, which we've already paid for? Uh, It applies to the decades-long delay in resolving inequality in our society. This should become a battle cry, shouldn't it, against the nasty party? Justice delayed is justice denied. Yeah, well, I mean, specifically about justice, they've axed, what, 21,000 police persons, 23,000 police support staff, they've closed 600 yep. police stations, about the same number magistrates of magistrates' courts. courts. Yep. It's uh, the, the delay in getting any uh, sort of uh, justice is uh, absolutely enormous, and they, they've gutted the uh, legal aid system. Um, yep. To call themselves the party of law and order is just a bad joke. Uh, but yep. they do, and they get away with it. And um, and anybody that is in that uh, legal system is uh, getting a uh, uh, is getting justice denied because it's being yep. delayed so so much, and people are just giving up. So exactly. they, they get no justice at all. Yeah, indeed, it applies so much to today's problems. And one slightly flippant point, if I may, uh, Jacob Grease Smug's new job is Minister for Brexit Opportunities, is yeah, that right? I'm afraid okay. so. Okay, nobody has pointed out that he'll have no work to do because there are no opportunities from Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart bugger, isn't he, to have got that. Uh, it's an it's an endless Johnson. job, actually, because uh, he will be forever searching for a benefit of Brexit, and, <laughs> and and it's a never-ending job if they don't exist. All right, thanks a lot, Vance. Cheers, mate. Oh three four five, six oh six oh nine seven three. Jenny texts Barry Manilow at the O two in June. I hope you got your ticket. You know, I was about to check whether he's still alive. Presumably, the answer is yes. I wouldn't buy a ticket, but if somebody gave me one, like if the record company is listening to this right now and they were uh, offering me a pair of tickets to go see Barely Man Enough, I would definitely go. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Jane says, Barry Manilow places all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order. He's 78 years old. Wow, still alive. Hmm. Uh, Glenn says, if Bodge is filling in a questionnaire, would every answer be the fastest vaccine rollout in the world? Yeah. (laughs) Every answer that's not, I'm delivering on the will of the people. God, it's painful. It's um, there was a Boris fan column in the mail today. Did you see that from um, a a bloke called Daniel Johnson? Oh, I mean, it encapsulated all of the uh, excuses that um, Boris fans are uh, doling out now. And it's, it's almost like an email. Has, well, I bet that it's not almost like. I bet an email has gone around telling people that these are the talking points because all of these people, they just say the same things over and over and over again. Uh, have I got time for this now? I'll, I'll take some calls and I'll get into it. It was excruciating. Um, let's have Belfast. Hello, Brendan. Oh, hello. I can't resist. Uh, I can't resist calling you. You know, I don't call radio stations, but you just provoke me every time, either with humour or, or some other reason. Yeah. So, I would just like to say about uh, the Ukraine, Ukraine. Sorry, I am um, not an apologist for anyone, and you know, I, I don't have a dog in the race. So, w- what I would say was, you know, there wouldn't be half a million British or half a million Americans, or half a million French living in Ukraine, nor have they had any association with the Ukraine historically. But at the moment, there are 10 million Russians living in Ukraine, and those 10 million Russians actually don't want NATO 
to move in and move missiles closer to the Russian border. Well, how do you know? 10 million seems to be a lot of people to um, to, to conclude the way they all think. Well, it's not how they all think. There are 10 million uh, Russians. There's 25 million uh, Ukrainians who speak Russian as their everyday language. Well, I speak English, but I don't agree with everything that the government of uh, this country um, uh, instills and installs. Yeah, I agree with you. But what I'm saying, I'm not I'm not uh, a Putin fan or I'm not a Boris fan, Boris Johnson. I hate anybody calling him Boris. And I'm not a Macron or um, Joe Biden. Yeah, well, Boris, I'm a wee bit Boris, of a Joe Biden Boris, fan, to be quite honest. Boris. I am a wee bit of a Biden fan. Boris. But having said all that, um, Ukraine was part of the USR, USSR for yeah. hundreds of... Hundreds of years. Right. So? So, I mean, it's a bit like the Malvinas. You know, uh, Thatcher sent uh, a fleet out the uh, middle of the uh, yeah. Atlantic. 8,000 miles away. Yeah. 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 To the Malvinas. And she tried to say it was the Falklands because there was 800 uh, farmers We from just England, bumped into they? it last. The French bumped into it before us, and I think the Portuguese bumped into yeah. it before them, and then I think the French were before yeah. the Portuguese, so the French bumped into it twice, and then we just exactly. uh, happened along it, and we said, uh, oh, okay, this is ours now. Yeah, but what I'm, I'm saying is, I'm not trying to be an apologist for either uh, Putin or any of them. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it's hugely hypocr- it's hypocrisy in the extreme for, for the Western media to say, well, it's all Putin, it's Putin, it's Putin, it's Putin. It is. You know, no, it isn't. Well, how is you? I mean, if the good people of Ukraine wanted to be uh, to be Russian again, then that would be in their uh, ability to do that. They could just vote oh. to go back into Russia. Um, Vlad the Insane would welcome them with open arms, but they don't do that. Well, Nick, to be quite honest with you, you, you're basing that on absolutely nothing other than stuff that you read in the British. Brendan, you Red just Pops. told me that 10 million people all think the same way. How do you no, know? I didn't, no, I didn't say you that. You just I said, said you said they all wanted to be Russian. No, I said there are 10 million Russians who have Russian passports who are identified as Russians. Well then, why why are they Ukraine. living in why are they living in Ukraine then? I mean, why can't they go live in because, Russia? It's a pretty big landmass. They could they could because, find somewhere. Because Ukraine was part of Russia, and when it was after the USSR fell, that those Russians were left behind that border, and they're still there. You know, they're I mean, still there. Well, they're, so they can't cross the border back to their homeland. Well, I mean, after all this the time, they've been unable to do that. You're not making any sense, Brendan. If the people of Ukraine don't want to be in Russia, then who is? Uh, uh, then how is it our business to tell them that they must be just because Vladimir Putin levels a, a, a rifle at them for crying out loud? God, there's so many P- Putin apologists in this country. There really are. It just is amazing to me. Just like you only have to mention Donald Trump's name and all of his supporters come crawling out of the woodwork. Where do you people get your information from? Where, where do you get this uh, the, 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 the sort of support network of, uh, of um, opinions that uh, leads you to think that you're on the right path? I just don't get it. Stop reading Facebook. Most of the things that you read on Facebook that would support these uh, opinions have been written by Russian robots. All of those, uh, like, uh, astroturfing sites. It looks like it's uh, grassroots. You know, it's just uh, a few concerned people. They start off and they write uh, opinions, and then a few more people say, yeah, okay, that's, that's right. And, it, uh, you know, it comes up from nothing as a, as a grassroots uh, organization or, um, you know, expressing opinions uh, as... Uh, uh, you know, it's put onto the internet by this by these grassroots, but they're not grassroots at all. They're astroturf because it, it's just it's made to look as though it's just the opinion of a ragtag bunch of people. But it's actually buildings of professionals who are writing all this stuff and sending it out. They're bots. 
They're robots just like this bloke is. Affirmative. <laughs> and they'll be the same people who say, oh, well, if you don't support to Boris Johnson, then you're a traitor. Very curious. I think that uh, moon-faced creep who runs Facebook's got a lot to answer for. Before, before Facebook and uh, social media in general, I think the world was probably a better place. I mean, people were less uninformed. You couldn't get unhinged opinions squirted up your um, uh, house on a daily basis because you'd have to actually go out and seek them. You have to go to the library and buy it in book form. We'd have to buy um, a, 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 an English uh, language Russian paper, or, which probably didn't exist. Now they're everywhere. The internet is the biggest uh, tool of information that has ever been invented, and what we use it for is misinformation. Misinformation and um, videos of uh, pussycats and puppy dogs. <laughs> I like those. John emails, Nick, when the Drumpf becomes POTUS again, how do you think Donnie will feel about his buddy Sleepy Joe taking the US to war before Donnie said he would? <laughs> I feel uh, aggrieved, probably. I'll bring us into war. I mean, he did promise that, and everybody was stunned when he didn't. He just got, uh, you know, busy uh, trying to um, start a war in his own country got all wrapped up in an attempted coup, too busy to start a war with anybody else. Gerald texts, uh, you are so right, Trump in power made Boris look quite normal by comparison. Now Trump's gone, the clown of Boris has been highlighted. Yeah, and the crown. The clown and the crown. How does he get his uh, hair to um, do that, uh, uh, by the way? You don't need to put all of that product in your hair. You just don't. You just don't. 0345 6060 973. It's 1130 on LBC. The news headlines with Zora Solomon. Nick Abbott on LBC. Who do you think you're talking to? Um, well, now that is a good question. How about Hove and Freddy? Hi, Nick. How's it going, mate? Good, thanks. Cool, then. Wanted to um, phone in to speak to you because I've been reading reports about um, in New Zealand they're kind of um, trying to repel protesters by playing Barry Manilow. Yes, I was wondering if the, if we're missing a trick on the uh, on the Ukrainian Russian border. Um, which is well, which is like could we send over like I don't know, a PA system and Robbie Williams or something like that? Oh. Uh, well, Trump let's let's not the situation. let's not get carried away. Robbie Williams, ugh, mm, yeah. that sounds like a cruel and unusual punishment. What have they done to deserve that? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I don't. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, as I've been listening to your show, that um, I can't, I, I've heard some of the callers call in, and to be honest, a much more pressing matter is. Um, Steve Allen's bacon sandwich. I agree entirely. Steve Allen's bacon sandwich. Get Steve Allen on the phone right now. I mean it. Well, wake him up. People want to know. Um, I don't know where this bacon sandwich thing came uh, into it. I, I don't believe that I mentioned it in any way, shape or form, but uh, people seem to be obsessed with Steve Allen and his bacon blooming sandwich. Should Steve Allen be, actually be eating a bacon sandwich? I'm not sure. 